Okay, here we are today at Titan Machine Tool making chips. We'll be doing some finished passes over here on this part, similar to the other one in the other video. Some sort of keyway disc. This actually looks more like a Lovejoy coupling or something. But anyways, mild steel, keyway cuts, all roughed out. Little radius notch out in there, all roughed out. I got it screwed down to the aluminum plate. I got a couple dowels I put in on a bolt circle that essentially made like a, almost like a V-block. I made like a V-block with these dowels here. There's one on each side. First piece I did was a larger diameter. So to keep the part somewhat central to the bolt circle, I got bolt circle here to screw them down. Keep the pot fairly central to it. I put some shims in over here because this is a smaller diameter than the first one I did. First one I did was like three and a quarter inch. This one's only three inch. So that's a piece of one eighth shim stock right there. I got the same thing on the other side. So I can nest that part back up against those dowels in a V fashion and it not deviate so far off center that when I put my clamp on, it's not clamping you know, fairly on the center line over here, or if it's advanced too far forward to that tapped hole, and too far away from this one. So that's how I set that up. Different sizes, I use different shims, just, just to put it in the approximate location. X-axis, it repeats really good, like within one every time. Obviously the Y is gonna change because we're floating this way a little bit, so I clamp it down, Put the indicator on it. Right here, this Jabba in the call. Sweep that baby in, zero, zero, all the way around. Make sure we're good. I roughed it all out already. I roughed out that front nacho right there. That's a uh, quarter inch radius in that front nacho, all the way down through the part. I didn't want to change tools. But I wasn't gonna do it with a half inch because if I went in with a half inch and it finishes at a half inch, the tool, oh, that's too close, let's back up. The tool is always gonna pull to one side. You plunge in on center with a half inch end mill, it's not gonna be on center. It's gonna always pull to the side where the conventional milling's taking place. So I went in with a 3 8 end mill and then walked around to rough it out. This is what I got going on here. That's the 3 8 end mill I used to rough out that little nacho. That's the half inch roughing end mill I used to rough out the slots. Those slots. Obviously I did the turning in the lathe, the OD, the bore through, it was all done in the lathe. I gotta put some reamed holes in over here afterwards. So I knew I was gonna have to move this clamp, that's why we got extra tapped holes. So then I take my clamp, and I put my clamps down in here. Pinch them down like that. Cause I gotta move this one. Reamed hole here, reamed hole here. So that clamp's coming out after in the other operation. So we'll finish the slots. Little three axis action. Right there, what do we got? We got a half inch solid carbide four fluid end mill. We're gonna finish those slots out with that. And this is what we're gonna finish the little half inch nacho with. It's a 3 8 solid carbide end mill with enough flute length to go through the part. The part's an inch and a half thick. It's got two inches length of cut right there. And what are we using for tools? Here's our half inch tool. What's it say? Manufactured 100% in USA. And what's this one say? Get some focus here. Designed and manufactured in USA. So that's what we're using for our finished tooling. Start her up, spindle on, 1200 RPMs ish or so, spray mist. So what we're gonna do here is, is we're gonna go, we left a little bit on each wall, we left a little bit on the bottom. We're gonna come down over here, finish Z-depth, go across, finish the Z-depth on center. Then we're gonna come up, come over here, do the same thing, finish Z-depth, cut across on center, to the finished Z-depth, then it comes back, semi-finished pass, moves over, semi-finished pass, semi-finished pass again, we'll actually finish pass, and then does the same thing over there, and then we go back and take a spring cut. And then if 
the slot doesn't size with the gauge blocks. Instead of doing all that roughing again, I got a tool change diameter right before the spring pass. So I can just go back, change from 500 to 499, take the spring pass, it'll take another thou off, size it with the gauge blocks. If we're good, we're good. Here we go. We're up here, okay? So all my roughing took place first higher up in the program over there. That was all the roughing passes. So when I come down over here, you can put comments in. A comment. So what did I put for a comment? Let's start the program up. What? What's it telling me to do? It's telling me change the tool. So that's what I did. I took out the hog mill and I put in the finished solid carbide end mill. And I got another comment in there. What's it saying again now? Oh, finished cut. It's telling me I'm taking my finished cuts now so I know what I'm doing. So now it's gonna call up the tool next. It's gonna read the tool. What's it gonna say we're using it? We're using half inch diameter tool. Make sure that's what's in there. It also tells you up here too while the program's running so you can look. But that's the prompt at the beginning before it starts doing its thing. So here we go. I already set the Z depth so we should be good. Start her up. And now you can see it's going over to that blue line right there. Oh, here comes the tool. Goes down. Z minus one inch. And there it goes. It's doing the cutting. There's a feature here too that says show tool path. So if I turn the tool path on, you can see so that when you have like overlap, you can see how much overlap you got on the program on the graphics over there. So now that's gonna come up and it's gonna wrap it over to the other slot. It's gonna go down minus one inch to the finished Z depth. And it's gotta cut across the piece. Now you can see in the middle over here, there's no material to cut. So I got a little rapid movement in there. We're cutting air. Think. All right, so I'm gonna turn the tool path off because after a while you can't see what the hell's going on. We'll come down here, we'll watch the, watch the end mill cut. So now it's gonna take a finish cut on the wall. Let's set the frame that's where it needs to be. Wrap it through the middle. Semi-finish pass. So I use the contour feature on this tool path movement here, which gives you two cuts for the programming of one. So I left three thou finish pass using the contour feature. So now it's gonna come back over and cut that same tool path, but to the actual finished number. The first time it went through, it left an additional three thousandths on each wall. And when you use the contour feature, you can change the feed rate. And when you change the feed rate, now it doesn't do that rapid move in the middle. Now, in theory, that slot should be finished if the tool had no spring and no deflection. So now it cuts the other one that's 90 degrees apart from, well, 180 degrees apart from that one. Kind of dark over here, huh? There again, that would have been a semi-finished pass using that contour feature, leaving three thousandths on each side. Let's play the chips. Sorry. So 
Now after this guy takes its cut and it stops, I'll get a stack of gauge blocks. I'll check them slots, make sure they're good. If they're not, I'll change the tool diameter and take an additional pass. So now it stops right here because in the program, I stuck another tool in. So at the end of all of that programming that we just watched it run, I stuck a tool in there. So now it's telling me to change the tool to a 499 diameter tool right there. So now this is where my spring passes will take place. I put that in so I can stop the program and check the slot. And the slot should be within 1,000 ish or so. Well, we'll just run it. And then I'm just gonna throw caution out there, throw it out to the wind, boop, whatever. And we're gonna run it at 499 now. So now it's looking for a 499 tool, saying, did you put a 499 tool in there? Well, I really didn't, but we're gonna say we did, and we're just gonna run that half-inch carbide tool again. So what's it doing? It's coming back on over here now. It's gonna go back down to finish Z-depth. And it's going to take a spring pass. See that? It's still making chips. That's deflection. Whether it's the tool deflecting. I don't think the part's moving. But that's, that's probably another half a thou or so per side, I'm guessing. Maybe a little more. Now it's going to do the other one, same thing. It's probably suggestion. Take the quill handle off when it's running in three axis. So then once I know these guys are all sized, I'll put a 45 degree tool in there and I'll go back in and just run these finish finished profiles just to put a little chamfer on all of those edges. There again now, this guy thinks it's done. We'll have to check the slots, make sure they're within tolerance. But now over here, tool, same thing. It's saying change tool. What's it want? It wants that 3 8 tool. It wants that long 3 8 off loop carbide end mill now. So I can go back in and finish mill that right there. Well, we'll call it a day on this one. We're at 13 minutes. So Titan, Mach Titan Machine Tool signing off. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.